corticosteroids. So in this uh, video, we're going to talk about the steroids. So the short name, we say the steroid. Before we talk about the steroids mechanism of action, um, indication and side effects, let's talk about a little bit about the adrenal gland. So uh, we have an adrenal gland on both kidneys, on the top of both kidneys. So like here's the kidney and there's an adrenal gland sitting on top of the kidney. Each kidney has one adrenal gland on top of that. What is the function of adrenal gland? Adrenal gland secretes two types of hormone. The one first one is glucocorticoid and second one is called mineralocorticoids. Glucocorticoids, there are three um, uh, endocrine enzymes are released from glucocorticoids are cortisol, corticosterone and cortisone, while the mineralocorticoid is the aldosterone. What is the function of glucocorticoid and mineralocorticoid? Let's take a look into your next slide. Glucocorticol, which is cortisol, cortico, which one, uh, cortisol, corticosterone, and cortisone, they increase the level of glucose in, in our body, increases the breakdown of protein and lipids. Basically, it's preparing body to, to produce more energy. Um, decrease the inflammation and immune response. So it will decrease the white cell count, it will, it will decrease the inflammation, um, it will decrease basically the inflammation system like uh, production of histamine and bradykinins and all inflammation inflammatory mediators. Uh, it increases the dilation of bronchial muscles and also affect the mood and brain excitability. So if a patient, if, uh, if uh, increased amount of glucocorticoid can um, change or alter the mood um, and uh, make uh, make make a person really labile um, to to mood changes mineral corticoid which is aldosterone uh, what it does it goes to the kidney and increase the sodium retention and absorption and when it increase the sodium retention and absorption we know these water is going to follow the sodium so it will increase the water retention as well so basically, um, aldosterone is helpful in increasing the blood volume level. Now, coming back to our main point, corticosteroid drugs. Corticosteroid me medications are nothing but just a synthetic form of steroids. So this is a man-made corticosteroids like uh, all the uh, the enzymes are produced by the adrenal gland which includes cortisone hydrocortisone methylprednisolone prednisone betamethasone dexamethasone and triamcinolone triamcinolone so these these um, medications work exactly same as these enzymes mineral corticoid and glucocorticoids okay now since we know all since we know the function of this glucocorticoids and mineral corticoids we can relate the indication like in which disease condition or in which specific condition we can use this medication for so now the first one let's take a look skin disorders just psoriasis rash allergic reaction and dermatitis now we know the fun one of the function of glucocorticoid is to decrease the inflammation and immune response so well, psoriasis rash allergic rash and dermatitis is basically um, one kind of inflammation um, and it, this this medication will help to decrease those this inflammation now we also know that it dilates the bronchial vessels and it also decreases the inflammation so asthma asthma is nothing but just the inflammation in bronchial in, in the airway so if you give this medication to a patient it will decrease the inflammation at the same time it will dilate the bronchial bronchial muscles will help in asthma um, it also if a, if a patient uh, has adrenal insufficiency basically if, the, if their adrenal gland is not producing enough glucocorticoids and mineral corticoids then the, these drugs can be given uh, as a supplement um, so adrenal insufficiency in order to decrease the immune system after organ transplant so whenever um, 
any kind of organ transplants like a kidney transplant liver transplant heart transplants there is a high chance that uh, there is a that organ can be rejected by the patient's immune immune system so this medication will be given after the transplant in order to decrease the immune system of the patient so they will not have a organ rejection after a transplant this one is also given in the al allergic rhinitis because it decreases the inflammation and also decreases the immune system as well um, this one's all given in ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease where it's basically inflammation of a small intestine and large intestine to decrease the edema associated with brain renal and hepatic disorders so this one is also used for the for to decrease the edema as well okay now there is also another questions I have remember um, the asks specifically for the asthma now you know like in a in an acute asthma attack um you give albuterol however if you have a choice albuterol and steroid which inhaler would you give first to patient like would you give albuterol first or steroid first so the answer is you would go give albuterol first the reason is when you give albuterol it will dilate the airway and after dilation of the airway you can give the steroid which will help to decrease the inflammation in the airway if you give steroid first and it doesn't do dilation of the of the airway it's not going to go all the way and not going to reach all the way down in the in the airway because of the inflammation and narrowing at the airway so that's why you want to give the albuterol first and then the steroid this is medications also used in a cancer such as leukemia and uh, lymphomas. Leukemia and lymphomas is um, is a overproduction of WBCs. So our body is keep producing it more and more and more WBCs. Not not all of them are mature like immature uh, WBCs. Now this drug suppress the immune system, um, suppress the production of white blood cells. So this medication is also given for for the leukemia and lymphomas as well. Um, in joint inflammation, uh, such as rheumatoid arthritis, and then also given in a shock. Okay, uh, so these are the these are the medications are widely used in even hospital setting, outside of the hospital setting as well. Um, these are I, I would say these are the like often used medication in ICU in med surge floor or even uh, as outpatient or like p people are regularly on this medication so what are the side effects and contraindication as we know like one of the one of the uh, side effects of the glucocorticoids can have a mood swing because as we talk it can can cause like pe people can have a really um can have people can be really labeled to mood changes so it can cause the mood swings uh, it can cause the weight gain because it increases the sodium and water retention remember min mineral corticoid increases the sodium retention uh, aldosterone um, and also the water retention will cause the weight gain and also increase in appetite would additionally cause the weight gain facial flushing insomnia um, it causes increase in fluid retention uh, risk for infection because the immune system is going to be suppressed so risk for infection impaired wound healing because of that um, due to the decrease in immune system it can cause the peptic ulcer now um, this medication can cause the osteoporosis because it decreases the absorption of calcium um, and can cause uh, can cause the possible bone fractures but those are really rare um, like for a patient who are like an increase increase age patient um, this medication can cause the hypertension due and also the congestive heart failure due to the increase in sodium and water retention um, and also it can suppress the hypothalamic pituitary system because it's a negative feedback system so if you're giving a patient the steroid, me uh, steroid medicines 
um, your brain which is um, where the hypothalamus is will say okay we have enough steroids enough corticoste uh, enough steroids in our body we don't need to tell adrenal gland to function so basically brain will shut down um, shut down the adrenal gland and that's basically suppression of hypothalamic pituitary system it is contraindicated in live vaccination because it decreases the immune system so you cannot give live vaccination to a patient who are on steroids because it will actually instead of creating antibodies their uh, instead of their body creating antibodies for those vaccine it will cause that disease uh, potassium depleting diuretics because this medication is also responsible for um, um, hypokalemia so one of the side effects we all know like it causes the hyper Nitremia, which is high sodium and it causes the hypokalemia sorry i mentioned i forgot to mention them in the side effects one of the side effects is hypokalemia as well so you do not want to give this medication with potassium depleting diuretic because it will cause even more hypokalemia um, you do not want to give it with digoxin because it can cardi can cause the cardiac arrhythmia because if you refer back to a cardiac glycoside video we talked about um, how the joxin a mechanism of actions is based on sodium potassium and calcium concentration so if this medication causes the hypokalemia you you cannot give or you need to be really cautious giving the joxin to this patient because it can cause the digoxin toxicity and cardiac arrhythmia uh, with NSAIDs it can cause the GI bleeds non steroidal steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs um, and also this medication decreases the effect of insulin and oral hypoglycemic agent because if you remember this medication already increases the glucose level um, and decreases the insulin effectiveness that will even cause more hyperglycemia in this um, this patients as well so you need to be really careful um, so that was it about the corticosteroids uh, really important class of drugs uh, if you have questions, uh, feel free to ask us or email us. Thank you. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you want to just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.